I regularly receive questions from management teams about risk reporting. They already have normal business reports, but some believe that separate reports about risks should be produced too. You will recognize this from your own practice. From an accountability perspective, internal and external supervisors typically want to see lists with risks. For example, supervisory directors tend to ask for the top 10 risks. Apparently, risk registers are perceived as tangible proof that you have thought about what can come your way. The point is that these risk lists can help to raise awareness, but otherwise they aren't of much value. That's not terribly handy. Fortunately, it can be organized in more future-proof ways. Please realize that thinking about opportunities and threats is just a tool. In service of your main question, to which extent are we going to be successful in the coming period? It's all about whether you are organized in such a way that you can seize your opportunities and limit your threats. If you have risk managers, risk officers, risk analysts, or whatever you call them within your organization, have them spend no more than 20% of their time on making risk reports that the regulators request. Cut and paste information from colleagues in your industry. Mix in some cool terms. Cyber risks always do well. And something with pandemic shows that you've been around this year. For the remaining 80% of the time, have your risk specialists do really useful things. Let them focus on your regular management reporting. By not just looking back, comparing actuals with budgets, but especially by looking ahead. Invest in solid, realistic forecasts. In this way, you build a picture of the likelihood of your success expressed in the estimated values of your KPIs for the coming period. As you prepare your forecast, you will have proper discussions about the assumptions used. The bandwidths that you use in your forecast are a translation of your strengths and opportunities. Plus, of course, of your weaknesses and threats. And if the estimated values of your KPIs look unfavorable, work together to determine what you can improve as a team in order to meet the expectations of your core stakeholders. And this is what makes your internal and external clients happy. I trust your team will benefit from these tips and more will come.